What's up? This is King Kevin Dorva in the building here reporting straight to you about the truth going on in the world. Um, today's story is going to be about the Queen's sister who is resting in peace, Sandra Annette Bland, who we all call Sandra Bland, say her name. Now, Sandra Bland died back in July 13th, 2015 in Waller County, Texas, right? Now, those of you who don't know who Sandra Bland is, I don't know what rock you've been hiding under, but she was a young woman who was killed in her cell and brought to jail over a basic traffic stop where a racist cop pulled her over, threatened to shoot her with a taser, and pulled her out of the car and slammed her against the ground. And next thing you know, she's in jail on a $5,000 bond, bail, $500 a bond out, and she never got got the bond in time, three days later, you know, she ends up being found supposedly hanging from a cell, but no one can prove that she was hanging in the cell. They, the, the pictures, all the pictures and all the evidence shows that she was on the ground, not hanging in the cell. Now, I just watched the documentary, Say Her Name, right? Uh, produced by HBO, or at least you can see it on HBO. And watched a few documentaries or interviews from different radio popular radio shows like on you know, 97 up there hot 97 up there in new york and the one um in detroit george mathis you know he, he gave his um legal perspective on the case right now to me ever since i found out she had died i automatically knew that she was killed in a cell automatically when i seen that video before she died when it, it made you know public news I was like, yeah, she, this is here better, you know, calm down. She's getting that jail because she in Texas. Now, I didn't know that she graduated um, down there in Texas. She's from Chicago, you know. She escaped the bullets, bullets of Chicago to get killed in Texas. And that's crazy because, you know, everybody knows Chicago is like, you know, gangland city, certain parts of it anyway. And it's unfortunate that a young sister, such a young age, at 33, ended up getting killed on a house like that. You know what I'm saying? So young, the whole world in front of her, but they're saying that she committed suicide. Now, the fact that they say that it was suicide, I'm like, okay, I really don't know who Sandra Bland was, you know, other than her being a Pan-Africanist, loving her beautiful black skin and her beautiful black people. On Sandy Speaks, which was her daily, you know, post on social media, she was giving encouraging words to, you know, her brothers and sisters. Hey, good morning, kings and queens. That's how she was started. Every video, which I, I could dig that, because you, anybody who know me, you know I'm on that king and queen royal behavior all day, every day. King Kevin in the building. Now, the fact that she loved herself, I couldn't see or someone who was on that level of consciousness would consciously execute themselves. Now, here's the facts. The guards would write down in their log the times that they walk by the cells to check to make sure this person is okay, right? So on the day that she was found dead, on July 13, 2015, at 8.54, they find her dead, 8.54 a.m. 8.54, uh, at 9.47 a.m., they have it written down that she's alive, but they found her dead at 8.54. So... Somebody's lying there. And it's protocol during any type of homicide or felony when people are, you know, are injured, car accidents, you know, leaving the scene of a car accident, that's a felony. Uh, suicide, homicide, murder, whatever you want to call it, assault. Pictures are taken on the scene, on the spot. These jailers find her in her cell, dead, and don't take any pictures. But all the world sees is pictures of her on the ground. Supposedly, she hung herself by a garbage bag that was in the garbage bin in the cell, which shouldn't have been in the first place. Because, one, she's a, a female that stated that she attempted suicide before in the past, right? And, and you go to my blog on KevinDorver.com, the article that I wrote, you know, Sandra Bland, 
uh, moment in black history, you check it out. I just posted it February 7th. Great article. Please share it. New York Times article that I quoted in my blog article, amongst other blogs that I write, it says that she had said that she committed, attempted to commit suicide earlier that year. Well, the exact words were, I attempted in 2015. But how can you attempt suicide in 2015 and, and you're going to, and now it's July, and you're going to say, I, I attempted suicide in 2015. No, you're going to say, I attempted suicide early, early this year, or the exact date, let's say if it, it was January. You know, I, I tried to commit suicide, you know, early this year, January 15th, or something like that. So that already doesn't sound right. Now, that's just speculation there. Now, the real nail, nail on the coffin was the fact that they found the plastic uh, garbage bag on some sort of shower rail in the cell, you know, and there's no fingerprints on it. Okay. She attempts suicide. She committed suicide, but there's no fingerprints on the garbage bag or anyone's fingerprints on the garbage bags. That leads to tell me whoever put that up there had on gloves. Sandra Bland ain't have no gloves. Proof of that, the pictures that they have of her on the ground, there was no gloves in her hand. Another thing that, that bothered me as well is that the, the murder murder scene, for call it what it is, is a murder scene, there they didn't preserve the, the cell. It was not preserved at all for further investigation. Let alone, they held the body as long as they possibly could before they had to turn it over to a private um, coroner to do the autopsy. This time they had a black woman do the autopsy. She didn't find any evidence of a murder, but there are questionable bruises on her that if someone were to suffocate her, because that's what she died of, um, you know what I'm saying, suffocation, if the person who did that put those bruises on her, who, who was that person? There's cameras at that jail. Why, the, why aren't the cameras showing who walked into her cell at that time of the day? Because when you look at those videos of that section of the jail, it seems like some small-time jail anyway. I've, unfortunately, I've been to big-time jails before. It, you know, she, you know, when she gets booked, the judge is there saying everything. It's like one of them old, you know, like back in the day when everything is done right in the courthouse. The judge, the jury, the execution. You know, the same same thing here with w Walla County. And there's cameras everywhere. But there's, but there's no... There's, there's no account of who went to her cell. Like, that video is gone. And another thing that bothered me as well is that if she was supposedly suicidal, like the... Uh, the intake paperwork says, then you would have had 24-hour watch on her or not have her in a cell in the corner by herself. So these things, these, these inconsistencies leads me to believe, and, and those of you who have common sense, that this is a cover-up. Now, this sister shouldn't have died the way she died. And the police officer who arrested her they, they arrested him on perjury charges, but guess what? All charges are dropped. No one, he obviously lied to the grand jury. Um, the, that's the only thing grand jury investigated, and they would investigate her, her, her suicide or the homicide. They just, <laughs> you know, uh, went after this guy for some petty ass perjury. Where he blatantly disregarded all her rights. And physically abuse her on the scene in public. This is going on in public. And this uh, one white kid, I'm assuming he's white because of the voice I heard. He was recording the whole thing from the sidewalk. And the police officers told him to get out of there. He's like, well, this is, I'm on public property. Why well, I got to go anywhere? You know what I'm saying? But he didn't want no trouble because he know where he at. Texas? Texas? Oh, man, you getting hung quick. Texas has, let me tell you how fast they, their uh, justice system work, right? The justice system, what they do is when you get convicted, say a serious crime, and you're on death row, you're going to get 
executed within that year. Other states, you might ride five, ten years before they finally get around to injecting you with a, a needle or whatever cruel and usual punishment that they use. They used to use electric chairs, but that has been, you know, uh, for the most part, <laughs> I believe no state does the uh, electric chair anymore. But Texas will kill you within that year. That's very rapid. So if you have an appeal and you're trying to fight your case, Texas is not the place to do that because, well, they will kill you. And it must be big business. Every city in this country, every city has a, I guess you will call it a, a police grant or police budget, right? Some cities have $10 million. You go to L.A., they may have $80, $100 million. Las Vegas as well. You know what I'm saying? So depending on the size of the city will depend on the size that the government gives you every year. The the city where Sandra Bland was killed at, very small town, but they had money for cameras. But they didn't but they were not using those cameras and they had a bunch of negligent jailers watching these people. And one of the things that I took from the whole case was the fact that Sandra Bland, she was only her bond was only five hundred dollars. I'm not saying that I'm the richest person person in the world, which I will be extremely rich one day. <laughs> Let me tell you. But five hundred dollars, her family can get five hundred dollars in twenty four hours to get her their daughter out of jail because she 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 had a job to go to. Sandra Black came. She graduated out of Texas. She came back to actually start a new job at her alma mater, right? And going to buy some groceries to put in her refrigerator is when her whole life turned around. Her whole life was like, you know what I'm saying? She met this racist guy. So what you guys got to learn from this? When you meet racist police officers, and I talk about this in the blog and you read it. One, don't get slick with them, all right? If you get pulled over, pull over in a well-lit place or in a public place where people can put out their cameras or stand and watch. Because now the police officer has to be accountable. And if for some reason you get pulled out the car, or you get, you ask to step out the car, step out the car, but stay within the view of the dash camera of the police car. That may save your life because a lot of these cops, and this then this one, um, his name was Eric and Senior. Let me get, get that correct name of this coward name. Um, you know, being on a black woman like that. His name was, and I'm reading my blog article that I wrote. Brian Insignia, Trooper Brian Insignia. He was smart enough to put her to the side, away from the camera. Now, had it not been for the, for the, for the white boy who had his camera recording everything, he could have, he would have did whatever. But when he realized that that dude was recording that, he kind of slowed down because if you listen to the recording of, you know, they showed a little visual, but listen to the recording, you hear her saying, why you slamming to the ground like that? He slammed her so hard to the ground, she temporarily lost hearing in one of her ears. Like, he was really going to do her in if it had not been for the eyewitness that was there with his, his camera phone. So we must be wise when we're, getting, when we're in, interacting with these police officers. We must be conscious of who we're dealing with. A lot of these people, a lot of these men with badges, or KKK with badges. Let's call it what it is. It seems to be some sort of rites of passage to kill a black woman or man to move up in the judicial system. I'm serious. And it's been going on for a while. And and it's a fact that back in the day during, during the Atlantic slave trade and who knows how many years after that or centuries after that if it's not still going on right now. For a man, a white man, to actually be considered an uh, adult male or move up in society, he has to sleep with a black woman. By force or the pay. Usually it's by force. So our sisters had a, gone through hell and back dealing with these white devils. And our men as well. A lot of our, our, our black males back then, they was getting, you know, bucked in the butt. They was, they was getting screwed in the butt. You know what I'm saying? So, you're dealing with people who have a demonic history. You're dealing with white folks who have a very interesting perspective on life and how they should be up there, here, 
when they really should be down here. We are the originators of everything. I don't care if you're talking about astronomy, um, archaeology, you're talking about science, we are talking about writing, reading. You know, our babies are born naturally advanced, but it's, it's the world, the propaganda that they drown us with dumb down our brains and our brain cells. And Seriously, because a child begins to absorb their environment at the age of three, sooner than that as well, but become, begin to become conscious of their environment, conscious of their position in the world. Because of the way the parents talk, the way the parents act, the food they eat, or the lack thereof food to eat. You know, it tells you, look, you are poor. Or the pictures on the wall, having the white Jesus on the wall. Now you're starting the trend to be inferior when you're putting the white Jesus on the wall. Or whoever you want to put on your wall, these white paintings. The fact remains is that we as a people, we got to stand up and be strong and support one another. There's no way Sandra Bland should have been in jail for three days on $500. It should have been some sort of GoFundMe or Kickstarter, anything, or the community or the family. That just shows the lack of power that we have as a people. If we do not unite, like Marcus Garvey always said, one name, one God, one destiny. We will always be disenfranchised because we are exactly where the superpowers or the powers to be want us to be at. Fighting one another, hating on one another, not supporting one another, putting each other down, degrading each other at every possible situation. Kobe Bryant just died crying out loud. Gail King dogs him on national television. Just like that. That's the vision right there. And now you got Snoop, you got Boosie, all these other actors and rappers and activists talking down on Gail, Gail King. Now, she dead ass wrong for doing that. Let's just like get it twisted. But see that the vision right there? She she shouldn't have put him down or trying to tear down his legacy. But he's a dead man who can't defend himself. And he was acquitted or the charges were dropped, which he was accused of. Right, so we gotta let let that be. If if if, if the young lady didn't want to press charges, because one, it p possibly never even happened, and we just wanted some clout or some money. But at the same time, forget to go ahead and do that. See, we gotta get each other support and have each other, you know, have our backs like we used to do back in the day in in, in times of Molly and the homie and Kim and Kush and Sudan and the Zulu Nation. We should have each other's back. I mean, not all black people got along all the time. Or even in Haiti, the Haitian, you know, the Haitian Revolution. If it wasn't for the, the, the unity and the brilliance of Toussaint Louverture, it would have been different factions going to war against the French instead of all uniting and whooping them like we did. That's power. Unity is power. That's black love. Black love is black power. Without love for one another... And support one another. Stand up for our sisters so they're not being slammed on the ground by police. And I've seen videos where guys are standing around and see police slamming young girls or hitting on women and little kids. Man, listen. If it was me and I'm looking at that, police officer doing that to a sister, <laughs> you think I'm going to sit there and just stand there and look at it with my camera? No, I'm going to cross this shit. That's what, that's what I'm going to do. And, of course, I'm going to... Run, I'm not going to just stand there and, and go get arrested. I'm going to knock the shit out of his ass, help my sister up, <laughs> and go. You feel what I'm saying? Because I know my history. There is no king without our queens. And, and without our queens, we ain't nothing. And our queens without their kings, they ain't nothing. We out here... Open, you know, lambs for the wolves. Being led to the slaughter. And all we're doing is looking at each other, laughing, posting on social media. Kicking. It ain't funny. You know how many young girls, or just women, period, were killed while in custody in these jails? In that same year Sandra Bland was killed? Or after, after she was killed? Over 800. I believe the number was 812, 815. That's ridiculous. We gotta do better. 
black men, please stand up. Because our sisters need us. This is a, a tribute to Sandra Bland. Uh, rest in peace. And I love what your sisters and your mom doing to, to keep Alexia alive. And by the way, the Sandra Bland Act was passed in 2017, which forces police to be a little more sensitive, supposedly more sensitive when they're at a situation like Sandra Bland's to de de escalate the problem um, before it results to going, you know, going to jail. As a matter of fact, it made it illegal to arrest people for petty traffic stops. Cause all you have to do is give her a ticket and go buy his business. But at the same time, we got to use our wisdom. Because just because they want to be a-holes, do not mean we got to be a-holes. We got to be smarter. This is chess, not checkers. King Kevin. King Kevin.